Chandrika Prasad Srivastava was born in 1920 into a landowning family in northern India. The tragic death of his parents at an early age forged a strength of character, depth and determination that he was to reveal in abundance later in life. He met and married Nirmala Selve in 1947. Her parents had been deeply involved in the struggle for Indian independence and Nirmala herself was a political activist. As a child, she had spent time living at Mahatma Gandhi's ashram. With their marriage, C.P. Srivastava and Nirmala began a dedicated partnership with a lifelong admiration and respect for each other's convictions and work. So C.P. chose a career which allowed him to remain in India. He joined the Indian Administrative Service, thus beginning his distinguished career. In 1961, he was appointed managing director of a public sector company, the fledgling Shipping Corporation of India. The Prime Minister was immediately impressed by this tall, articulate young officer who came with such a formidable reputation for integrity and capability. The period that I spent with him was probably the most elevating period of my life. And uh, I was with him till the very last day of his life, when he died in Tashkent. In 1974, he was elected Secretary General of the United Nations International Maritime Organization, based in London. He was unanimously re-elected for a further three terms, serving a total of 16 years. In 1989, he announced his retirement, which was received with great regret by the United Nations. Worldwide, he has received 31 of the highest honours and awards in recognition for his tireless service and outstanding attributes. He was also the founding Chancellor Emeritus of the World Maritime University, conceived and established by him in 1983 under the auspices of the International Maritime Organization, thus ensuring that all developing countries were able to participate actively in the work of the IMO, which until then had relied largely on the expertise of developed maritime states. Despite being honoured by royalty, Sir C.P. remains an extremely humble, gentle man. In July 1990, the Queen of England gave him one of her country's highest awards, Knight Commander of the Most Distinguished Order of St. Michael and St. George, making him the first Indian to be knighted since independence. Sir C. P. Srivastava has published several books, including Lal Bahadur Shastri, A Life of Truth in Politics, and provides an inspirational model of an ideal politician. The book was launched in Sydney in 1995. And I find that people here have a, a feeling for people of India and people for developing countries. They understand their problems. So I said, if we step out of India, where else? Let's go to Australia and begin there where the people are absolutely wonderful and full of understanding. While your text salutes a great Prime Minister, you can take great pride in your own role, your personal contribution to these great achievements. The book, ladies and gentlemen, is now officially launched. In November 2005, Sir C.P. was awarded the sixth Lal Bahadur Shastri National Award for Excellence in Public Administration, Academies and Management, which was presented to him by the President of India in a special ceremony. On this momentous occasion, when the Lal Bahadur Shastri National Award has been conferred upon me before this distinguished assembly by the President of India himself, who, like Shastriji, is a visionary and globally renowned for his ethics, integrity and righteousness. I bow down to him in deep reverence and with feelings of abiding gratitude for me, sir. This will be the most memorable moment 
of my entire public service career in my life. Throughout his career, Sir CP's ability to draw differing parties to the same table and through persuasion, diplomacy and negotiation to reach agreement has gained for him lifelong respect and admiration. Before concluding, I seek your permission to acknowledge the enormous debt of gratitude which I owe to my wife Nirmala who is here, without whose mighty support all these 58 years that we have been married and without the loving care of our daughters Kalpana and Sadhana who both are here, I could not have been standing before you today. I am now 85 years old and whatever still remains of my life is being devoted to working with Nirmala who has over the preceding 35 years worked ceaselessly for the creation of a new society based on the essential unity of all religions and who upholds the same ethical and moral values that Sri Shastriji steadfastly stood for. While mixing in the most powerful diplomatic circles, he always supported her work to transform human beings using Sahaja Yoga techniques. Now, in his retirement, he has continued to travel the world with her, promoting and encouraging the advancement of this great movement which connects people to their own inner spiritual energy and gives them the ability to transform themselves regardless of creed, culture, race or religion. A glance at Sir CP's life reveals a portrait of a living legend. Over his many years he has worked tirelessly alongside Sri Mataji in his own area of diplomacy to transform humanity and bring freedom, hope and enlightenment to the world.